My name is Chanel, and I'm lazy. Well, I like to say I'm efficient. When writing the speech, I thought there's got to be a faster way to do this. It's 2021. Who writes over 280 characters anymore? Let me explain. I'm a data scientist, but a developer at heart. So if there's a faster way to do something, I'm going to spend more time trying to find it than doing the actual task. So I grabbed all the transcripts, the previous data science speeches, then I wrote a computer program, which for me is easier than writing a speech script. This computer program analyzed all the previous speeches and then wrote new speech, guaranteed to win. Right, this is genius. I've already picked an outfit out for the awards dinner. <laughs> but don't worry, it won't just be me that benefits from my blood sweat code. I'll be telling you about how you too can create a speech as brilliant as this one. So let's get into it. These are the key findings from my algorithm. Number one, there's always an introduction completely unrelated to the talk that shows personality and dashing brilliance. <laughs> my algorithm says it's really important to have acronyms. And let's not forget, keeping everyone's attention. Let me tell you more about my algorithm, Lisa. Learning Intelligent Super Algorithm. What a fame name for an algorithm that told me to write an acronym. There's actually more than one reason why I chose the name Lisa. Lisa's the name of my hero, Dr. Lisa Scoop. She's the CEO of AMD Advanced Micro Devices. They create computer processors and related tech. If you've ever picked up a phone, used Google Maps, or even used a computer, you've definitely used that stuff. I really admire Lisa. She's an engineer through and through, an incredible businesswoman, and she is so charming. She once said, as a little girl, it was my digital dream to run a semiconductor company. She's my kind of person. <laughs> <laughs> and do you know what else is a huge deal? AMD is a Fortune 500 company, and only 8.2% of CEOs at Fortune 500 companies are women. This means that there are 41 female CEOs of the 500 CEOs. My digital dream isn't to run a semiconductor company. My digital dream is to have more representative role models in every role. I want more diverse role models to encourage people from diverse backgrounds to become seniors and leaders in companies. A more diverse workforce has multiple benefits like increased creativity, which, which leads to greater innovation, a more diverse company will produce more inclusive and accessible products by default. And let's not forget things like higher employee retention and a wider talent pool to pick from. The list is endless. I hope I've kept your attention. <laughs> well, let's move on to my favorite topic. I'm not gonna give you a problem and not give you a solution. So how about these machine learning to get more diverse role models in tech? Machine learning is a type of artificial intelligence that allows software to produce outputs like grouping, approximating, and classifying. It works by using historical data or examples and it finds patterns within that data. Right, this all sounds like I memorized the wiki entry of machine learning, so let's make this more fun and let's learn about machine learning in terms of the parallels between humans and machine learning. And let's play a game. Let's say that we're training a machine learning model to classify cats and dogs. Cats and dogs have many similarities that we can see, like they both have pointy ears, those cute little triangle noses, they're roughly the same shape, but cats tend to stand more, have different postures, and dogs have different facial bone structures. I'm sure we've all seen those and those with cats and dogs before, so let's think of ourselves as a pre-trained machine learning model, and I want you all to shout out or classify if the following images are either of a dog or a cat. Dog. 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 Cats. 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 <laughs> dog. Cats. Almost everyone got that correct. <laughs> that's, a, that's a dog that famously looks like both a dog and a cat. Let's play another round of this game. Is the following image a dog or a cat? <laughs> Shrek. Correct. It's Shrek the ogre. <laughs> Thinking about how you classify those images, you might not have seen those exact images before, but you can still figure out which is a cat, a dog, or neither, fairly well. So, 
Now you're machine learning experts and I figured out a way to put Shrek in my presentation. Let's play another round. And let's play another game. How many software engineers do you see in this image? Any guesses? Six. Correct, actually. According to a machine learning algorithm, the answer is five. And they're highlighted right there. Let's play another round of this game. How many CEOs do you see in the same image? Well? Three. Three. Close. <laughs> According to machine learning, a machine learning algorithm, the answer is two. And there they are. In this case, the machine learning algorithm was both correct and incorrect. The two people highlighted in the image are actually CEOs, but there are other people in the image that the algorithm missed. But I think we're starting to see a bit of a trend here with the male presenting people being chosen for these roles. Let's turn to a real world example. A cloud technology provider made a machine learning system aimed to become the holy grail of hiring. They wanted to feed it 100 resumes and then it would just tell them who to hire. Given 10 years of data, the machine taught itself that male candidates were just better, and it penalised resumes that included words like women's, like women's chess club captain, and it downgraded graduates of women's colleges. Which is nuts. The algorithm negatively targets women, and that's not just wrong, it's illegal. It's breaking discrimination laws. Despite this, as a data scientist, I love to see machine learning work. It can do so many fun things like helping us classify cats and dogs or helping us with speeches, but like with all great things, it does have its downfalls. When this data is acquired, it can sometimes be biased, which is a massive issue when it impacts real people, like when women or any other group are discriminated against. So, as much as it pains me to say, Maybe machine learning isn't the best solution for us to get more diverse role models in tech, for me to realise my digital dream. Really, it sounds like we want something that thinks like a human, but isn't human. Something that's completely unbiased. But what if I had a solution? Something some of you might be aware of. He's made us laugh, he's made us cry, he's even made some of us swoon. <laughs> I see a few confused faces. For those of you who didn't know, this is Vision from the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Now, before he was a dashing superhero, Vision was Jarvis, which stands for just a rather very intelligent system. Jarvis is an AI being and would do clever things for Iron Man, like image recognition, health observations and recommendations, and he even remind Iron Man when his anniversary is. Jarvis is the perfect being. Jarvis would never discriminate against anyone. I'd love to work for Jarvis. I know what you're all thinking. This is all nerdy comic book stuff, right? Well, actually, the concept of an intelligent agent or thing that can understand or learn lots of different tasks that a human can is called AGI, which stands for Artificial General Intelligence. And it's got lots of people really excited, like some of Atlas's most strategic partners, like Google and Microsoft, who have whole companies dedicated to AGI. These companies will bring millions upon millions into research. I love this stuff. <laughs> it's so exciting to keep up with the field, and as you can tell, there are so many intelligent people working tirelessly on this. Honestly, I could end the talk here and say that AGI will solve all of our problems when it's ready. But that would be such a useless technology as a solution to everything talk. It's just, it's just too easy. AGI just isn't here right now, but the lack of diverse role models is a problem that's very real, right here, right now. And I don't know about you, but I'm not willing to wait for more diverse role models. So, if the solution to my digital dream isn't AGI, then what is it? If we think back to the algorithm that I mentioned earlier that was biased against women, it had learned from the history that we presented it. In fact, machine learning superpowers detecting patterns and learning from practice. Even AGI would learn from situations and feedback from us. So, my solution is us.
that we are the change, that we should change the patterns that we detect as bias, particularly in the tech industry. After speaking to as many people in tech that I could, I found that there are a lot of qualities that are needed for success, like tenacity, hard work, and persistence. And I want to say that I found a pattern or trend for success in the field, a formula, like that algorithm Lisa found in terms of actual sex, but there are no steps like an introduction, a main body, and a conclusion. There are just so many different journeys into the field, so many different factors, like defining moments that are unique to each person. From what I understand about how machines and how machines work, I think we could all do with seeing more positive examples and stories, or data, to see that tech is for everyone. I want to see more examples of women coding, talking about the pure rush of closing Vim for the first time, printing their first Hello World. I want to see women leading conferences on technologies that they know inside out. I want to see women on panels that are just about diversity. My additional dream is to have more representative role models in every role. The past is broken through the lack of diversity. We need to change the data ourselves so that future technology has a chance. Let's put the humanity back in technology to get the diversity that we deserve.